Uh, so we have already covered uh, five C's of sanctioning credit and where uh, we have covered character, capital, capacity, collateral, and what's the last one? Conditions, conditions. Uh, so when we evaluate our uh, credit clients or credit customers, uh, at the time of evaluating, we have to emphasize on five C's. Once we find it's all right, now it's really tough to set the conditions, set the terms and conditions. Uh, what we have mentioned at the time of setting terms and conditions, you have to think uh, whether you can collect on time or not. And another one is whether you can retain your customers or not. So two different issue. One is you have to retain your customer. Uh, your terms and conditions should not be that uh, much tough that you can't retain your customers. And another one is uh, you have to boost yourself. And, and that's why uh, normally credit terms uh, considers two different points. One is called credit period and another one is called uh, discount or cash discount. So under credit period, uh, what is the decision? Decision is that for how many days you are going to extend your credit. Uh, it is for 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. And obviously your terms and conditions related to credit period. If you allow for 30 days, your credit period uh, is very less, only 30 days credit. So your terms and conditions will be uh, a little flexible, a reluctant. And if it is for 90 days or 120 days uh, for six month uh, credit period, Obviously, you have to be careful. Uh, your terms and condition will be a little tricky, strategic. Uh, it is called tighten uh, terms and conditions. But again, uh, one key point is that word we say that uh, you see that already someone left because the record is on. Uh, th this is the problem uh, basically when we record the uh, lecture. And, and then uh, the second question, we say that you must have some terms and condition in your policy uh, that really encourage your credit buyers, uh, your credit buyers, your credit, encourage your credit buyers to repay earlier or you can get your money back earlier. And what is the solution? The solution is cash discount. And it's really simple. Uh, how it works, uh, suppose you have extended credit for 90 days, but in the terms and conditions, you have mentioned uh, that if someone uh, uh, pay the money in one month, they will get 10% discount on payment. Uh, if someone pay in two months, they will get 8% uh, a discount, they need to pay 10% less or 8% less. So this, this really works. Did you are actually leave I mean, recording to off Kuru Dibu. Samratasi, sir. Samratasi. But this is the problem. This is the problem. All the time, some students are here at a group, uh, they misuse the record. And now our cash discount uh, really works. Uh, cash discount works in this way that you see that we have written here uh, what we have written, uh, how to read it. Uh, it's, it's written two by 10 net 30. It means uh, these terms and condition uh, means if the buyer uh, or pay within 30 days, that will get, sorry, if the, the period is 30 days, uh, the credit period is 30 days. And if they pay within 10 days, they will get 2% discount. So it's beautiful. It, it's really work. So uh, this way you can set terms and conditions. So when you have a very good credit policy, it has effect on your business. And if you have very good credit policy, your sales volume will increase. So this is called revenue effect. But same time, you have to extend some discount facilities, commission facilities, 
or additional product facilities. Uh, uh, once upon a time, Coca-Cola uh, had another kind of uh, credit businesses or uh, terms and conditions like this. If you buy uh, four or five cases of Coca-Cola, that will allow you one more cases of Coca-Cola. Uh, it, it, it happens. So if you pay within the time period uh, or within the uh, less than time period, that will uh, provide you 10 bottles additional or 20 bottles additional Coke. So th these kind of uh, uh, terms and conditions uh, you may design. So you have cost effect. Cost effect means you have to spend on discount. You have to spend on commission. You have to spend on promotion as well. And also you have another uh, consideration is your cost of debt. Cost of debt, why? So when you extend credit, uh, so uh, you need liquidity. Sometimes you are also depending on debt. You are getting money from the bank uh, to expand your business on credit. The money you are uh, investing on credit, that is basically a credit amount. So you have to consider that uh, the cost of debt, the money you have received as a loan or debt, the money you have to pay and the sales uh, really increased because of your terms and conditions, whether both match, uh, you have net profit or not. If you find that your uh, debt financing is mostly uh, expensive uh, compared to the benefits you are getting from credit sales, then you should not go for this. Also, you have to consider the probability of non-payment. Yes, of course, uh, there is always a probability of non-payment. A certain person will not pay on time and a certain person will never pay. Uh, it's not that they have bad intention, but it's because of the uh, uh, environment. Uh, maybe there is a flood, or there is disaster from anywhere or, or any kind of sufferings uh, or uh, fire accident. Uh, there are many reasons. So you have to consider the probability of non-payment. That case is you have to consider the risk and how can you minimize the risk? You must have that policy as well. Uh, we have already explained uh, cash discount when we are considering terms and conditions. So here again, the same point is that uh, what percent of cash discount you will uh, allow or what amount of cash discount you will allow that should be uh, critically analyzed, not only the analysis, critically analyzed. You have to analyze critically considering all the environmental factors. And also uh, you can consider uh, Porter five forces. Uh, you can consider a competitor's situation, what they do. Now, how can you monitor your account receivable? For monitoring account receivable, you can use average collection period method or aging uh, schedule. Uh, we will talk about uh, two uh, different uh, methods. And also we have one uh, approach is called collection experience metrics. So that's why I'm uh, adding more information today, though I have covered uh, some points in my last class, but. I find that uh, as a working capital management student, you need to know about this, that okay, we extended our credit sales, we have account receivable, uh, we are very good in terms and conditions setting, we have already checked uh, five Cs. So all we did, but still we need to uh, know about collection period. Uh, we need to know about aging schedule. Uh, and, and that is not theoretical. Quantitatively, you have to find out that what should be the optimum uh, collection period for your business. And from ratios, you can calculate average collection period. And what's the formula? Average collection period can be calculated by uh, your account receivable. We say uh, account receivable or debtors, same debtors or account receivables into 360 uh, divided by credit sales. The question is why 360? Why not 365? Because uh, 52 weeks equals to one year and 360 is uh, easy to, uh, calculate, uh, it's divisible, uh, and that's why we use 360. Average collection period will give us the days, then we can easily find out that how many days we take to uh, get our money back from the uh, credit sales or from account receivables or debtors.
then what is a aging schedule uh the a, a aging schedule uh a, a, how it works uh aging schedule breaks down receivables according to the length of time for which they have been outstanding so there is a difference when we uh talk about uh we calculated the days we need to collect the money so we we have just calculated days we just know the days uh no nothing more from the previous calculation so we know that if we sell on credit uh, it takes 60 days to get our money back so uh, this is a very limited information yeah that is not enough but when we go for aging schedule how it works it breaks down receivables according to the length of time for which they have been outstanding and what it do it will provide you more information when you break down suppose you have some 10 days credit some 20 days credit some 30 days credit some 40 days credit now you are breaking your credit policies into their length so you are classifying differently and then it is easy to understand that what credit sales need more attention or what needs less attention so these requires more attention these requires less attention and it's only possible when you break down receivables according to the length of time and if you just calculate average you see that average collection period average means all together you know that uh, yes average 60 days uh, but, but th that is not enough to uh, focus on exactly what are the uh, uh, what, what requires special attention to collect but still, uh, we need more uh, tools and techniques regarding our uh, receivables management. Uh, another method is called collection experience matrix. So this is a new terminology. Normally we use uh, the, the collection experience matrix. So what it is, yeah, the, Normally, uh, we see that when we calculate average collection period or aging schedule, uh, uh, you remember aging schedules based on age. If you can remember that age means uh, boyosh ba shomoy, so aging schedule will give you the schedule on the based on the days. So you can remember easily. If you find that uh, the, the theory is difficult, then you can uh, remember the word age will help you to remember that uh, different ages of uh, uh, receivables we have. So collection experience matrix is what, uh, when we consider aging or average collection period, what we did basically, uh, we did, uh, we did, we considered aggregate sales and receivables debt, aggregate sales. So you see that, uh, what was that? The, the was sales aggregate sales together receivables aggregate means together Akshate sales Akshate receivables ke amra energy so we need to eliminate this problem to the information together sales nilam together receivables nilam then we need the uh, disaggregation means amader alada alada koro information so how can we do this? Amra actually ag butcher sales be If we divide it to quarterly, then yearly we can evaluate four times. Or we can do monthly. Then we can get information 12 times. So this is called disaggregated data, not all together. Or we can have weekly metrics. Weekly, every week we will have sales information and accounts receivable information. We can compare that last week, the scenario, the second week scenario and third week scenario. So why, why this is, this is simple, but why this is called matrix? Because we present it in a matrix. You see what we do when sales over some time are shown horizontally and associated receivables vertically, in a tabular form, then it looks like a matrix. And that's why this is called collection experience matrix. Now you see how it works. 
first week first week so we have first week sales suppose 10 million 10 million on credit and first week 10 million sales 10 million sales first week 10 million sales and our collection 2 million so you see that 10 million sales first week 2 million collection second week our sales increases to 15 million our collection yet 2 million now what can we say we say those sales increases but collection is less now there is a signal we are getting a signal that our second week performance of uh, of collection is not really good enough to consider the sales considering sales our collection is not good enough you see this says so here is sales and here is receivables collection so if we say our credit sales is 10 million our collection in this week is 5 million second week we have 20 million we increase our sales 20 million collection should increase 10 million but it's 7 million then we can say the way our credit sales are increasing our collection is not increasing same way so we get signal and we can take decision whether uh, uh, we have to take uh, measures or not what should be the right strategies Amar Monahai, uh, <laughs> Now, another one is called factoring. And uh, that is also uh, used for receivables management. Very interesting. Uh, I'm not drawing anything, but I'm requesting you to listen uh, why it is interesting. Uh, though the word is factoring, but it's interesting because it's related to third party. Third party means uh, you guys are my buyers. Those are listening to me and I'm the seller. Now I'm selling on credit and you are buying on credit. So I have account receivables. Now, what can I do? I can sell my account receivables to a third party. Uh, fill it. I can sell my account receivables to a third party or a third party can take the responsibility of my account receivables. Obviously they will get some benefits. Now what happened? Am I taking the collection risk, collection pressure, or I am delegating the responsibility to a third party? Delegating, sir. So you see that the word is factoring, but analysis is so interesting and beautiful. So now what you can do you can emphasize you can do more business on credit because you know that you have signed a contract with a third party who are very good in collection so they're taking the responsibility of your collection so you do business you do business you sell on credit and they're collecting you sell on credit you can do business very well yes sir 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 OG side of interest now that I talk about the Kodaki officer was in Amito Kitchenina. I mean, I'm going to go to the world and Ibona. Tomaki Mone High, J. Tumar Jackie Chataki to Miss Silkuri, the account receivable. No, sir. The Tavole E. Postuta to Tokuni Karaobe Jokon to be account receivable Jackie Chataki Silkuri. A jacket chatake sell kore the way is it possible? But to me, sell kore the larajon a tension nipegano. Adukini bay? No, sir. Karani bay. Kara e kat kurve. It's a financial institution. Financial institutions. Among the other expertise, that's it. Other credit recovery team, that's it. Other jet force, that's it. X force, that's it. Y force, that's it. Uh, that the monitoring team also continuously they are in the field. So, to me, Nijay, that's why team Lalon Palon na kore. 
তুমি এরকম প্রতিষ্ঠানের সহযোগিতা নিতে পারো হ্যাঁ নিতে পারো আসলে পারো আবার আবার তোমরা নিজেরও এই বিজনেসটা শুরু করে দিতে পারো নিজেরও একটা লিমিটেড কোম্পানি করো তোমাদের কাজ হচ্ছে তোমরা রিকভারি কাজ করবে সার্ভিস ইন্ডাস্ট্রি এত পড়াশোনা করে এই ইন্ডাস্ট্রিতে চলে আসতে পারো তোমরা রিকভারি কাজ করবে ইউ ইউ উইল হ্যাভ ভেরি গুড ট্রেন মনিটরিং টিম আর যারা বিভিন্ন কোম্পানির পক্ষে রিকভারি কাজ করবে প্রথম কয়েক বছর কষ্ট হবে বাট উইদ ইন ফাইভ ইয়ার্স ইউ উইল বি লিডার চাইলে করতে পারো এই যে ফ্যাক্টরিং এর কনসেপ্টের কথা বলেছি এই ফ্যাক্টরিং কে আবার খুব কয়েক ভাগে ভাগ করা হয়েছে এই যে কয়েক ভাগে ভাগ করা হয়েছে সেগুলো কেমন কেমন ওয়ান টাইপ ইজ নোন এস ফুল সার্ভিস নন রেকর্ডস আমার মনে হয় তোমার প্রশ্নে আরো কিছু এলাভোরেট উত্তর পাবে ফুল সার্ভিস নন রেকর্ডস a full service non recourse what does it mean uh, under this method account receivables are purchased by the factors assuming 100% credit risk now you see i need another explanation factors acha tumra nijara bolo to ekhane factors ashole kake boleche buyers ওই যে কোম্পানি যে প্রতিষ্ঠান আমাদের অ্যাকাউন্ট রিসেবল কিনে নিচ্ছে ওই প্রতিষ্ঠানকে বলে এখানে কিন্তু নতুন টার্মিনোলজি চলে আসছে এই জন্য আমি তোমাদের রিকোয়েস্ট করে আছি বলছি যে অ্যাকাউন্ট রিসেবলের তিনটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ থিওরি আমরা আলোচনা করলেও আজকে আসলে ইম্পর্টেন্ট কিছু টার্মস আমাদের জানা দরকার বিকজ উই আর ওয়ার্কিং ক্যাপিটাল ম্যানেজমেন্ট স্টুডেন্ট সো ফুল সার্ভিস নন রিকোয়েস্ট ওয়েন ইট হ্যাপেন assuming 100% credit risk tomar puro risk ta kara niye nibe puro risk kara niye nibe another company factor factor another company naam ki obviously factor tala arekta notun word pelam amra kintu factor onek kaaje byabohar kore je otite kintu ekhane dekho factor mane kintu ekta company factor mane ekta protishthan jara amader account receivables kine niche tara amader pokke receivable er kaaj korbe তারাই দায়িত্ব নিচ্ছে হান্ড্রেড পার্সেন্ট ক্রেডিট রিস্ক এর এই রিকভারি দায়িত্ব তাদের এবং যদি কোনো কিছু রিকভার না হয় তাহলে আমাদেরকে পে করবে কারা তারা কি রিস্ক নিচ্ছে দেখো আচ্ছা এবার যদি প্রশ্ন করি তোমাদের এরকম ফ্যাক্টরস এক্সপেন্সিভ হবে না চিপার হবে তারা ফিস বেশি নিবে না কম নিবে ছিল non course recourse non recourse and this is full service recourse factory what it is the client is not protected against the risk of bad debts so he has no indemnity against uncollected debts so agetate factor ki korechilo 100% credit risk niyechilo এখানে কি এরকম কোন বিপরীতে কোন গ্যারান্টি আছে তৃতীয়টা কি বলেছে এইজিং ফ্যাক্টরি এজেন্সি ফ্যাক্টরি সো এজেন্সি ফ্যাক্টরি নিয়ে কি বলছে দা ফ্যাক্টর ইউ সি দ্যাট নাও ফ্যাক্টর ইজ প্লেয়িং এনাদার রোল আগের দুটো থেকে আলাদা আরেকটা রোলে চলে যাচ্ছে ফ্যাক্টর ফ্যাক্টর কি করছে ফ্যাক্টর ফাইন্যান্সেস দা ব্যাড ডেটস এগেইনস্ট দা এজেন্সি আইদার অন এ রেকর্ডস অর উইদাউট রেকর্ডস অর্থাৎ এক নাম্বার অথবা দুই নাম্বার যাই হোক 100% রিস্ক নেওয়ার ক্ষেত্রে হোক অথবা রিস্ক না নেওয়ার ক্ষেত্রে হোক 
what factor is doing factor finances the bad debts factor rin dicche amader jodi kono bad debt hoy tahole factor ki korche rin dicche finance ar finance dilo factor ekhon shudhu fees pacche na fees chhara aro ki pabe amader kach theke interest very good ke bolche interest ache very good you see tahole bujhe shohoj agency factoring jokhon hoy then factor extended another support to us that is financing and the fourth one non notification factoring you see that ah uh, eto interesting nam theke dekho abaro amar udahorone chole ashi ami tomader ke baki te bikroy korlam you are my account receivables tomader kach theke receivables collect korar jonno ami factor appoint korlam उटलोजार्टोमार्स कस्टमर समय नष्ट कर दरकार नहीं उत्तर दिए फैक्टरिंग खरच है एक खरचर नाम की फैक्टरिंग कमिशन और सार्विस फी प्रथम Uh, one factor will purchase account receivables. Dora na, our take, our company na Micro World Corporation. So, koto taka account receivable purchase kuchche factor? One lakh. Very good. Ab jara one lakh bolcho na tarao bolauchi. Karon ita the practice hoye jabe. The factor would pay in advance. Amake koto percent pay kore dibe already? नियोग ना दी कतदिन 60 days amader ke ki prepare korte bolache cost of factoring factoring tahole tumra tomader company er jonno factoring koro tritiyo pokkho ke niyog dao othoba nijera factor hisebe byabsha shuru koro ei chotto concept tomader lagbe ekhon amra uporer problem theke to bujhte parchi je amader ke koto percent pay koreche advance 70% टोटल अकाउंट रिसीवेबल पर परिमाण কত ছিল 1 লাখ তাহলে আসলে কত পে করেছে আমাদেরকে 
बारो द्वारा भाग कर गुण कर ले मास खरचे कत चले हाथ टाइम फैक्टरिंग 9,66 जा 16.57 just repeating so we are given information about a firm uh, they have existing policy they want to tighten their new policy so what's the existing policy they have they are selling 36000 units now at price 32 and their variable cost per unit 25 and their average cost 29 average collection period 58 days and collection expenses 10000 and existing bad debt 3% tara to tight korte chay tara kothin korte chay arektu so they want to tight their uh, policy and then their additional charges will be 20000 20000 kharch bere jabe bad debt will reduce to 1% kome jabe bad debt collection period kome jabe collection period will be 40 and sales volume is likely to decline 500 ektu tight korle sales kome ashe seta hobe ebong return on investment target to be set So, what's the question? Whether you support the first one or second one? Do you recommend first or the second alternative? Do you want to tight the policy or do you want to remain with the same policy? So, this is your brainstorming task at this moment, and then I will obviously discuss whether you are right or wrong. 
uh, before I start, I want to give you five minutes time uh, to listen from you. <laughs> 